I, I, do you, you hear me, right, like this? Or should I speak closer to the microphone? Yeah, I... Thanks. All right. Welcome to the session about uh, configuration management in Drupal 8. I'm Fabian Bircher, and my Drupal uh, handle is Bircher, my last name. Um, I work for a company that's called Nuvole, which is uh, Italian-based, and we're a 100% Drupal company. Um, we have a distributed team uh, from uh, Italy, Belgium, and uh, the Czech Republic. And our clients are from all over the world, and mostly we work on uh, international, uh, for international organizations and institutions. And uh, some of the requirements include often that they want to have several developers at the, working on the same project at the same time because it needs to go fast. And uh, we frequently need to update the, the sites and push the configuration um, to the live site and need safe updates. So I guess that covers most of you as well, that the, these needs. And um, uh, Nuvole has pioneered the, the, what we then called the code-driven development in 2010 already. Um, but in Drupal 8, it's called the configuration management. So the challenges that we face is remote collaboration on, on site development, because we don't work in the same office, so we... The uh, communication is, is limited, um, as you cannot just go to the next desk. Um, and we need to keep track of all the configuration and then pushing them. So I will start um, with the first chapter, uh, which, which is very basic. So the people that drop in um, miss only the historical part. And, and not the most complex one. So, historically, Drupal has always kept the configuration in the database. So when you, when you go in the user interface and you click around, this is reflected in, in the database. Um, starting with Drupal 6, uh, there was the features module that I assume every one of you is familiar with. And it allowed to start exporting configuration into PHP. Um, in Drupal 7, the features module became um, better. It's more mature, but it's still a third-party module that is, is not part of Drupal core. And in Drupal 8, there is a very clear separation. And when, while architecting Drupal 8, the, this decision was very deliberate to separate the configuration and the content. And the configuration is text-based uh, rather than in Drupal 7 where it's uh, PHP files. Um, so when you move around configuration, you can, of course, move around the database. Um, but uh, it's, it's very bad because the configuration and the data, like the database con contains both also the code and the configuration. So if you, if you take the development database and update it, like all the live uh, data is lost and so on. And you cannot track what is happening. So this is, it's very bad, but you can still do that in Drupal 8 as well if you really want to. But, you know, if you, if you want the nice things that come with Drupal 8, then the rest of the things will be more important. Then the features driven, um, also, also a couple of feedbacks. And I include this here because there's also features in Drupal 8, but it has a very different role just come in. <laughs> it has a very different role than, than in Drupal um, 7. So um, features is made for packaging configuration. Already in Drupal 6, that was the, the purpose of features. But in order to do that, you also need to export the configuration if, so, if, so that you can package it. Um, but this was not really the design goal, so there was always like these this problems with it. And... Not everything is, is exportable. And in a feature, you, you whitelist the, the kind of things that you want to export. And, and it's not the whole site uh, that is under your control. 
But in Drupal 8, there is a configuration management. And it used to be the CMI, the Configuration Management Initiative, but it's, now the initiative is, was successful and now it's a configuration management system. So when we talk about the configuration management in Drupal 8, it's very important to understand what the reference use case is for it. And that's, you keep your site online all the time, you have a separate development and testing environment where you develop the configuration or you change the configuration. You export everything from the development side and you import it on the production side. And it's the, between the same site. So there's different instances of the same site in different environments. And it's not for transferring partial configuration between two different sites. It is very important because this is a limitation uh, of the configuration management system. So, um, a small guided example, how, how you use it. First, you clone the site to, to your development environment, and on the production you do a full install, and you make a complete backup as, as you did in Drupal 7. And on the development side, you, you restore that backup. Then the live site operates. On the development side, you change the settings. Then you export all the settings. You download a tarball. And on the production side, you upload this tarball. Um, you can see what changes. In, in this case, it was the site name. And then you import it, and the configuration becomes live on the, the live site. So, Let's take a closer look at the configuration management. First, maybe it would be interesting to define what the configuration is. And configuration is not state. State is the, um, the settings that are very instance specific. And the, the canonical example here is the uh, last time the cron was run. Um, it's also not cache. Cache is as something to save expensive calculations and they're rebuilt. And the configuration management is not um, cheap. It's, it's actually very expensive because it does a lot of checks to make sure the configuration is sane. And it's not content. Content is the stuff that people add to the site. Um, but of course, the configuration and the content, there can be some blurry lines, especially if you come from Drupal 7 development and you think about taxonomy terms, because taxonomy terms, they're content, so they're not meant to be transferred between the staging and the um, production environment with the configuration management system. But the definition basically is then all the rest, so the stuff that you want to be able to transfer between environments. There is a the config module in core, and it provides this import-export functionality. And I think everyone will have that. Um, and yeah, that's the use. So the configuration, there, there's a couple of different kinds of configuration, let's say. The, the original configuration can be provided by modules, profiles, and uh, themes. They come uh, in YAML files, and one YAML file per configuration object. And then once the, the module is enabled, the, they become active. And the active configuration is stored by default in the database, but you can also change that if you want to. The important part is that you import it again, and you don't edit directly the live configuration, because, for example, if you enable a module, then the, the enable hooks have to run as well. And if you would bypass the importing export, then, then that would not happen. So here's an example for a, for a simple YAML file. You see it's... Uh, very human readable as well. You can read it, right? This one, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's very simple. There there's also more complex one. If you this is just from the uh, system site, but there if you check one of the views, then it it's much longer. And so by default, there's an, the active store, which is where the configuration is used when when the site is run, and there's the sync store which is used for the temporary storage. So when you upload the tarball, 
then it gets unzipped into this uh, directory. By default, it's um, a file storage. But the two, they have basically the same structure. They're more or less like a key value. You have a name for each of the configuration objects have a, has a name, the file name, and then the, the content, which is a descriptive, like in YAML or then in a PHP object. Um, so this, this original configuration is in config install uh, on the modules and the themes and profiles. And when it's imported from there, then the site owns the configuration and not the module anymore. So if you think about the feature, you export the configuration into a feature, and then the feature owns that. But the configuration management does not work like that. Once you import the configuration from, from the, default, like the original default configuration, then the site owns it. And when you change it in the user interface, it will not reflect back to where it came, like this, this directory. And configuration, they can also have dependencies. So here you see um, the uh, view, mo uh, view display for the node article. It, it's just at the top of the file. And it, it depends uh, on the fields, which then also depend on the content type and so on. And you see that it also depends on the module. And when you import the configuration, all this is checked so that all, all the dependencies are met. And for, um, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I, I mentioned that already before a little bit. When uh, you export it and you import it, it's in the sync directory, and you can also specify it. And um, once the import is run, all the hooks uh, are run as well, and the uh, file, the fields are added. And because of the dependencies, it knows in which order it has to. Um, at the configuration. And in some cases, um, you can also have optional configuration. For example, the node module comes with views, but if the views module is not enabled, then the optional configuration will not be enabled. So it's, you can avoid this way, like a circle, circular dependencies. And every time you enable a, a, mo a module, then the, the system checks if there is optional configuration in already enabled modules that depend on the module that you just uh, enable. Um, and this is, is, um, comes from, from the schema of the configuration. So for example, um, here is a, a view schema. And you see all the configuration, it, they start with the name of the module that provides it. So like the, a, a view um, needs to have the view, views module <laughs> enabled, of course. And so if you have a, a view um, configuration in your optional um, this, um, directory, then when you enable views, it will also um, go and fetch that and enable that. And, and so this is the, the naming pattern. It, it follows this... Uh, the, the schema, and the schema is also in the module config. It's, if you explore it a little bit, you will find all of these uh, things. Um, then where this um, sync directory is located, uh, by default it's under uh, site's default files and in some randomly named uh, folder. Uh, that's for security reasons. But you can put it wherever you want, uh, also outside of the web root and if you want to use Git to manage the configuration, then of course you want to um, put this directory under version control. And this is how you do it in uh, settings.php. So the configuration API. Is, is so far everything clear? All right. So in Drupal 7, basically everything is in the database. Uh, except for, for the files and, and the PHP code. In Drupal 8, by default, it's also like that, but you have the possibility to exchange where the stuff is saved. So, for example, you, you could have Redis or 
um, memcache or whatever you want to have, and, and all the different things can be saved in, in different places. Um, up to, to you, basically, where you want to have them. Um, the configuration entities uh, and objects, there, there's two um, basic types. Um, one are configuration objects. They're there for a simple configuration, which, of which there is only one, like, for example, the site name. And there's more complex uh, configuration entities, of which there can be none or many, or one, of course, because one is a special case of many, um, like views, date formats, content types, and so on. And they each extend a base class, so if you want to create your own, then um, you can start from there, and it's, you, you have half of the things already done. Um, in Drupal 8, everything is an entity. If you were uh, here yesterday, you heard the talk about the uh, entities in, in Drupal 8. Um, and there's config entities and content entities. The content entities are like nodes and so on, and they have uh, their own logic with it, and they're made so that you can have a lot of them. And the config entities, they extend the config entity base class, and they're like made so that you can export them into these YAML files and save them and, and so on. Um, there is mutable and immutable configuration. So normally when you work with the configuration, you want to retrieve the immutable one and you fetch the configuration very simply. Um, of course, if you are in a class, then, then you would uh, use dependency injection and not write it like this, but this uh, is valid syntax. Um, but if you want to change the configuration, for example, if you have a form that you, you can change it, then you want to have the editable configuration. The reason for this is that configuration can also be overwritten. Um, but I will talk about that in, in just a slide. So, very basically, if you want to work with configuration, um, you do the... Uh, it's <laughs> so, the... the you name the configuration that you want, you, you, and then you get the sub-property of it. If you remember the site uh, name, the system site before, it had like a sub-property with the name, and then that's the way you get it. And for setting it, you need to get the editable configuration object and set the property on there, and then save it so that it gets saved. And there's no more variable get and variable set if you are porting a module, then you need to think whether that was configuration or whether that was state. And some, like the cron run was also variable, but so, so when, you, when you port, you need to think about it. But no more variable get than set. So configuration can be overwritten, and it can be overwritten in several ways. The most of the time that you will encounter this is probably um, overriding it on the fly with... Um, a config array that you specify in settings to PHP. And this way you can, for example, set API keys for uh, the live site and not use the live API keys in, in the configuration that you version and that you have on the uh, local development uh, environment. But you cannot override everything that way. You cannot, for example, override which modules are enabled that way because the modules... Um, are compiled into PHP and then the service content. Like, it's a lot more complicated, but this is just for uh, easy configuration overrides that you would usually, in Drupal 7, use the variables overrides. Um, the configuration is also overwritten by the language. So the language is basically a configuration override as well. So the translation is, is the override in that case. And... The, when you want to uh, save the form, then you want to have the configuration without the overrides because otherwise you leak in the translation into the configuration and then it's bad. 
So depending on, on how you, you want to work with it or, or what you want to do, if you just want to display it and you want to have the possible overrides on your configuration or whether you want to see the original of it. And there are two different ways. So far, any questions? No. Good. Uh, I said before, there's uh, features also for Drupal 8. But the scope of features has changed a lot. And um, now it uh, depends on the configuration update manager. And its focus is really to package configuration for reuse. So you, the typical example is like you make a gallery and you want to use the, the same gallery on, on other sites as well. And it's meant as a development module. So you will, not, you will not want to have uh, features enabled on a production site usually. Because, of course, you use the configuration management to synchronize the configuration between the development environment and the production environment. Um, there's also a couple of new things because the features module depends heavily on the configuration management because now the configuration management handles all of the import export and the, all the configuration is in the same format and so on so it doesn't have to export that anymore and it can focus on doing new cool things um, for example it can you can have assignment plugins so the features try to set them up themselves almost uh, there's feature bundles um, and the the interface the user interface is actually a separate module as well like the views, UI, and so on. And uh, it enforces naming conventions, which is also very nice if you work with uh, features. So the, the feature name is, is, hard, is, is getting into the configuration then. Um, so the role of features is um, a module for developers. And th the... The interface is, is uh, not under structure anymore, but under development configuration. And uh, you, you don't use it for deployment. <laughs> I said that again. And I stress this fact because like, a lot of people um, use features for deployment. And so you, you, it, you know the tool and it has the same name and then you think, oh, okay, I can do the same because the configuration ha ha system has a couple of limitations that I will talk about in a moment. And then you will say, okay, well, let me, let's just use features. But if you do that, you live in the same world that you do now and you don't get all the nice stuff. So, now, on the couple of next slides, I will spend a little more, more time because this is really the the change of thinking that you need to understand when working with the configuration management in Drupal 8. And so this features workflow. If you use features in Drupal 8 for deployment, you're doing it wrong. So features is for something else. It's for reusing the configuration. If, if you have several sites that are very similar and you want to get started very quickly, because you have several clients that have several need, uh, diff similar needs, then this is perfect. And you can transfer the configuration between the sites, between different sites. And there's uh, a little features workflow graphic. So you have the, the site A and the site B, and you have the different environments and features you use between the development environments. So the, you transfer a feature from between the development environments, then you test that the feature in the, in the site works as well on the staging environment, and then finally you push it to the production. And you know that it works because the configuration management system is there to make this happen. That, that's what it aims to be at, and that's the use case for it. So this lateral sharing is for features and not for the configuration management. Um, but how about if you have several developers that work at the same time? Um, the configuration always needs to be imported and exported when, when you um, transfer it. 
And you always work with the whole set of configuration. There is also a UI for importing and exporting single configurations. But if you want to benefit from the nice features of the configuration management system, then you always need to treat the whole configuration. Because if you remove a file, then that translates to re removing the configuration. So the, the act of deleting a, a piece of configuration is by not exporting or not importing the, the file anymore. And the whole management, the whole the dependency check only happens if you import the whole configuration. And if, if you merge this, this um, work together, Drupal does not really merge. But we have another tool. It's called Git. And Git is good at merging. So you, you have the following workflow. First, you, you export the configuration and you commit it to Git. Then you fetch and merge the changes from other developers. And then you import the configuration again. And only after that you continue to work. And this is, it's the order of these steps is very important. Because if you don't commit it first, export and commit it first, and you, you get the fi files from, from Git, then when you export it, you overwrite completely everything that the other developers made, and you replace all the files, all the configuration from the other developer by the ones that you have on your site. And then, of course, if you're Git savvy, you can still recover it and you can still manage, but it's more of a pain than just remembering this step to do this step first. And especially if you just add all your, you're exporting your configuration and you override the, uh, your colleague's configuration and you commit it and you continue and you notice very late, then um, he will not be very happy with you. And the same, if you forget to import the merged configuration, you lose, it, it's even worse. Because then you do not check whether the configuration that Git just happily merged is, does actually make sense for Drupal. Um, a very nice example for this, and you can, you can try it out at home, is the first developer, like you install standard, every, like all the developers have standard. Then the first developer says, okay, let's use the image field on the um, page content type. You reuse the same field, no problem. You export the configuration, and at the same time, the other developer says, no, nah, the image field on the, on the article, that's bullshit, you delete it. Exports everything happy. You can uh, happily git merge both of these configurations, because you didn't work on, on the, the same file. So the developer A just added another field instance for the uh, file field. And the developer B removed the f instance and the storage um, for, for the file field as well. So they're, they're not the same files. Every, Git is happy. But if you try to import this configuration, Drupal will tell you that this doesn't make sense because you cannot have the field um, instance without the field storage. But the field storage was removed, so like the configuration cannot be imported anymore. And if you forget to import the configuration again, you will happily continue without having the um, field storage in, the, in your configuration. And even if you could have imported it, the next, you, you continue to work, and then when you export it again, you override the, the things because you did, like the merge that you did before is not actually reflected in your site. So far, so good, right? Okay. So... The, the essence of this is when you change the configuration, you're actually developing. So because you version the configuration in files, like you do when you develop, then that's kind of treated the same way. So if you change the configuration on the live site, you develop on the live site. Very simple. Luckily, there is a module for that. It's called config read only, and it does not allow you to change the configuration on the live site. <laughs> If this module is enabled and, and uh, loaded, 
then whenever you try to save a configuration form, it will not allow you to do that. It will error out and not change the configuration. And big, I said before earlier, the Drupal knows what is configuration and what is content. You will be happy to add more nodes and more tags and more fields and more, uh, not more fields, more, more files. But you cannot change how many items are displayed on the view. You cannot change three to five. It will not allow you to do that. But of course, we have clients and they want to be able to do stuff. And sometimes the locking this live site is not an option. But then you have to treat your client as a developer, even though he doesn't need to know about that. But you need to synchronize the configuration from the live site before you deploy the configuration again. Because if you deploy the configuration, all the changes the client made are gone. So uh, it, depending on, on the situation, depending on, on, on how your team works and how your client works, you will have to find a, the, a good way on how to deal with this. But it's very important to keep this in mind um, because otherwise it will be a source of trouble and it can be avoided if you just think about it first. Then, uh, next scenario that Drupal core does not handle. What about you develop your site, you make it nice and shiny, and then, only then, you put it on the live site. You remember in the, in the first slide I, I showed you uh, that you uh, clone the live site to your development version. The, the thing is, um, when you install a site, the installer creates a new site. So, and the new site is the UUID of, of your site. You can then trick the site into being another site by changing the UUID of that and so on. So, so you, you trick the site into believing it's another site, actually. Or there's a module for that. Or actually, it's an install profile or a pseudo install profile uh, called config installer. And... That's exactly what it does. It takes the configuration from another development, or like the site that you developed, and it imports it and makes the installer think that it's the site that you gave the configuration for. Uh, it's maintained by Alex Pott, who is also the maintainer and of the configuration management system and the core committer, and he's here now, so go buy him a beer. Um, then there's another uh, thing that the configuration management does not handle by itself. For example, if you want to have the develop, develop module on your development environment, but you don't want to have the develop module on the production environment, the problem is exactly the same. You always treat the whole configuration uh, as such to, to make sure everything is sane. And so... If you do that, every time you export the configuration, you have to remember to first disable the develop module and then export it and then import it and then enable the develop module again. Luckily, there's a module for that, or actually, it's Drush. Uh, I didn't mention Drush before because I think everybody of you will know Drush. And um, Drush, of course, comes with... The, these options as well. Drush can, conf, uh, can import and export the configuration. And it has the additional uh, nice feature that you can also specify that you want it to exclude certain modules. So if you do Drush config export, skip modules devel, it will skip the devel module and all the configuration that depend on it. And the same with config import uh, skip devel. I, I told you before, when you import the configuration and the configuration is not there, then that is regarded as being deleted. Or if a module is not in the list of the enabled modules in the configuration that you import, the module is uninstalled. So this way you can tell Drush to ignore uninstalling uh, the well when you, install the, uh, when you import the configuration again. All right. I was faster than I thought. <laughs> I was speaking probably too fast, but that is also good because now we have uh, also time for questions. Yes? Um, is there a way to, uh, in a nice way to ignore some like, value in configuration export? Um, I don't know. You, you, 
intention to manage the changes on the production environment in some in, in other branch and merge branch. But for example, if if the client wants to change uh, like uh, site slogan in like regular basis, and I don't want to like override it often on when you know, you know it's changed. Um, so or uh, the other example is uh, block type. So when you define the block type and you create a block of the type and place it through a blog interface, it will yeah. export you this block with the content itself. And, but I think th that's more of a, like the, this, this custom block type, it's more content than, than the configuration. Yeah, that's, that's, all, that's also, uh, um, should I repeat the question? <laughs> or Okay, so the question is, um, what happens if the client uh, decides to, to change some of the configuration uh, often and you want to ignore it um, in this workflow? Uh, unfortunately, that's not really foreseen, let's say. So, yes, the, the, there's these blurry lines. Like, for example, taxonomy terms are, are content and like the block placement is configuration. Um, but it's not really too complicated um, to keep track of that and you just before you do the deployment you, you um, export the configuration from the live site or you do that on a regular basis with the cron there's even a module that exports the configuration directly um, and conf commits it to git when it's changed um, but it's you, you still have to do that because um, the whole system is made so that it's uh, stable and, and it's reliable. And if you start ignoring things, you can, of course, always git ignore things. Um, but then you, you, you lose this, this stability, this, this assurance that it will be okay. And most of the times, you will not have conflicts and it will be okay. Because the, um, if, if you just change the, the block layout and so on, it, it will not affect what you as a developer do normally. And if it does, then you're very happy to know about it. So, like, I would say it's better to get used to that and you use that, like, embrace it rather than trying to fight it. Because it, it helps you. It's, it tries to help you at least. Yeah, the small things, but like if if you cannot lock the completely the configuration changes on the live site, then you can also not know like then you would have to partially lock it, and then where do you draw the line? So it's better if you just <laughs> be safe and use it the way. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, I saw you first, and then you and you. Okay. Um, yes, so it's Drush, so you can tell it to always do that for you. Like, you, you can set the aliases and, and all the... You, you can tell Drush to always add the Y, for example, or you can add the URL to... For, so you can also add this to, to the things, I think. I actually never tried this, but I'm very sure you can. And then you are next. Yes, so you can edit the YAML files when they're in the synchronization directory. But you should never change the active directory to files and then edit these. So as long as you import and export the configuration between the edits, then that's totally fine. Actually, Drush even comes with a, like an inline edit. To, so you can Drush config edit. You say which configuration you want to edit, and then it will like open uh, the... Um, editor, and you can change the configuration and save it, and then Drush will import the configuration again. So, you you can, but um, not the Active Directory. <laughs> so the Active Directory is, all, is, um, is the Active Directory used, or is then uh, put to the database? Yes. So the the Active one is is the one is, is in the database. So it's it's like a caching layer also. Like there's many things that happen with it. 
No, the active, the active uh, storage is only in the database. It, it changed. <laughs> so there, it used to be, there used to be a directory, actually in the beginning of the Drupal 8 um, cycle, when, when this was developed on, the active directory was, uh, or the active storage was also a directory. It was also files. And there was this, the other one was called staging, but that confused people because of the differences between development, staging, production. And the staging here is, is to stage it before importing it. But now they renamed it to sync, and they removed the active one because it was empty, and that was also confusing people. And it's in the database for, to protect you from doing that, and also for performance reasons. Yes. And you, yes. Go ahead. Yes, there is. Uh, I, I think I said that like in a side note. <laughs> you, can, you can import and export uh, individual configuration as well, which is basically then the same as using the Drush edit uh, of the configuration. That, that's the same mechanism. When, when you do Drush config edit, or whether you export it as a file and you edit it with a file editor or a text editor and you import it again. But this is... is Nice if you if you develop stuff, and this is how features also works. Features imports only a small set of configuration, but if you deploy, if you use the configuration management for what it's made for, if you deploy configuration between two different instances of the site, you want to use the whole, because if you import and export individual files, then it cannot know whether other ones are deleted or not. And, and it just it changes this, this individual one as if you would go to the UI and change it there. Like if, if you import the, um, I don't know, the, the site name uh, thing and you change the, the title, it's the same as if you go to the user interface and change the title there. But if, if you want to deploy it, you need to do, use the whole. Yes. Um, that depends. I, me personally, I use the uh, con Composer um, Quick Start Drupal 8 um, repository. I forgot exactly what it's called. Um, and it sets up already a structure. So uh, the Drupal root is actually in a directory of the Git repo. So there's a re um, directory called web, and there is the Drupal root. And I have the configuration in the same in, in the root directory, so it's outside of the web root and in the same project uh, specific one. And then I have also a, a subfolder there because maybe if you want to share configuration, because you can do config export and then you say to which folder you want to export it to. So you, you can have several versions of the configuration even in the same. <laughs> So th there's many different ways on how you can do it. You don't have to use only one uh, location for, for it. So And maybe it's easier to compare uh, and, and so on. Yes. I think you were first. Yes. So <laughs> I think there's a, like a two-part in your question. Um, so when you install a feature, it's like if you install an, another module that provides configuration. And, and the configuration is then owned by the site. And it's actually one of the things that features tries to figure out. How do you update a feature? How do you, if the feature maintainer changes the feature, how do you know if that feature like, has a new version or a new configuration. And the, the module on which features depends on um, has this little trick to know whether the configuration that is active differs from the configuration in the config install. So it, it tries to figure out that, uh, how, how they're different. But in the end, uh, you, like, the site administrator has to decide 
which were like what do you have to what do you want to use? Do you want to revert the feature in in that in Drupal seven terms? Yes, yes. You you can update the feature, but you have to decide to do that. And then and that's why I said before, the features is on the development side. So that when you decide whether you want to have the configuration imported or not. And then you you import the, or you export and import the whole configuration again and features is not there to interfere. Okay. The, you? Mm, this one? Yeah. Uh, or? No. no. Okay, no, the, this one is the setting and getting. Yes, because the, um, it's dependency injected, and in the um, config form, you already have the editable configuration. So, because in a config form, you, you want to save it. <laughs> so you already get it. And the... the, the um, like here, um, this this part here, this is how you 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 get the. Um, th this is basically a shortcut for for uh, Drupal config factory get. Um, uh, not not edible, <laughs> but and and then you you get th this part is is for the um, the individual property in in that uh, configuration. And and you can you can set it the same way if the original one if the configuration object or or entity is already editable. Yes. Other questions. No. Good. Thank you very much for attending. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind for sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh,